Can a $2 knockoff high flow nozzle from AliExpress beat the 10 times more expensive genuine Bontex CHT? I declared Bontex 3D printer nozzle with core heating technology to one of the big innovations from last year. And it didn't take long until the knockoffs and copycat flooded AliExpress. But are they any good? Let's find out more. Guten Tag everybody, I'm Stefan and welcome to CNC Kitchen. This video is sponsored by NordVPN. Take control of your internet experience today and get huge discounts on NordVPN's two-year plan with four free additional months if you go to nordvpn.com slash cnckitchen or use the link in the description. 3D printers have been becoming really fast recently, yet there is still one big physical challenge that holds them back and this is how fast you can get the material in the nozzle to melt. The thermal conductivity of plastics is almost by two orders of magnitude lower than the one in brass for example. This means that even though the 3D printer nozzle can be super hot, it takes quite a bit of time until the heat traveled into the filament to melt it. This means that at high speeds, when the filament is quickly pushed through the hot end, the core can still be solid while the outside is already molten. Core heating technology tackled that by splitting up the filament into three individual strands that are then thinner and therefore melt faster, making it possible to basically double the maximum extrusion rate. Even though this technology is patented by 3D Solex, where Carl uses it for awesome Ultimaker high flow print cores, it of course didn't take long until we saw knockoffs on the market and even some printer manufacturers snuck special nozzles for higher flow capability into their machines. I would have even expected to see something like this on Bamboo Labs machines, but my cold pulls looked very clean and I think they were very cautious not to run into any legal problems right at their launch. Talking about the patent, I think that 3D Solex and Bontech deserve a ton of credit for their work, but there are currently some interesting things happening around the patent, which I'll discuss later. Anyways, a viewer sent me one of them that he purchased from AliExpress, where they're selling for only two to five dollars instead of the still reasonably priced twenty dollars CHT from Bontech. I deliberately did not put any links to the knockoffs in the description because they might infringe the patent and I want to stay out of legal trouble. I rather want to fund this objective investigation with your views, so consider feeding the YouTube algorithm by leaving a like, sharing it and leaving a comment down below. So let's take the AliExpress CHT and put it through its paces. Let's first do an extrusion test, or as some call it, a poop test. Here I extrude beans of filament in increasing speeds and by measuring their weight I can easily tell if they are under extruding and compare the results of the AliExpress nozzle to a genuine Bontex CHT and an E3D V6. All nozzles have the same 0.4mm orifice size and I use the same hot end and extruder and an extrusion temperature of 215 degrees Celsius with some very standard PLA. Because I was curious, I started with the AliExpress CHT and oh boy was I impressed by the results. I started at 5 cubic millimeters a second and went all the way up to 38 cubic millimeters a second. Usually the last blobs are way smaller than in the beginning because at these high speeds the extruder is not able anymore to push hard enough and start stripping and skipping. With the AliExpress nozzle even the last ones were very hard to distinguish by size. I waited them one after another and put the values into a chart which shows that the extrusion amount slowly starts dropping until it completely drops down at 30 cubic millimeters a second. I repeated the same procedure with a regular E3D V6 nozzle and Bontex CHT. A regular nozzle was way behind, topping off at only 16 cubic millimeters a second. Don't get me wrong, for most printing on standard machines this is totally sufficient and regular slicing profiles usually top out at 10 cubic millimeters a second or less, yet if you want to go faster or use bigger layers, a regular nozzle can be the limiting part. This is where the CHT comes in, where we have seen doubling in performance in the past by only changing the nozzle itself. Pause! 
Quick ad break right here, because I can't feed my daughter with free printers and filament. And trust me, I tried. If you check out the great offers that sponsors like NordVPN provide, they will continue helping me create content like this. NordVPN doesn't only offer a huge discount on their two-year plan right now, and an amazing four months for free if you sign up under nordvpn.com slash cnckitchen, or by using the link down in the description. They are also running a cybersecurity awareness campaign so that you know of potential online threats before it's too late. Here's one lesson called man in the middle. Since we can finally go outside and travel again, we'll be connecting to a ton of free Wi-Fi in cafes and at airports. You might have seen this yourself when you find several free networks and can't be sure which is the official one. If you connect to a random hotspot, this man in the middle might actually sniff into your send and receive data and get a hold of passwords and credit card information. NordVPN cybersecurity lesson here is that in cases like this, you need to make sure that you see HTTPS in the address bar, which is also often indicated by the lock icon. This won't make sure that the Wi-Fi is safe, but it will make sure that you're at least using a safe browser to server connection. If you want to be even more secure, use a VPN like NordVPN that encrypts all of your data before it leaves your device so no one can listen to it, regardless of a dodgy Wi-Fi and an insecure connection. When I'm on the road, I personally use NordVPN exactly for this purpose, because this way I can make sure that my data and my accounts are safe. NordVPN has over 5,000 servers in 59 countries all over the world to which you can connect and enjoy a free and unrestricted internet without censorship or also to simply watch your favorite Netflix shows over the Christmas break that are not available in your country because NordVPN works on your PC, Mac, smartphone, tablet and even your smart TV. Don't believe me? Try it out risk-free with a 30-day money-back guarantee and four months for free if you go to nordvpn.com slash cnckitchen or by using the link in the description. Thanks to NordVPN for sponsoring my channel and thank you for trying out their great deal using the link in the description. The flow test with the official genuine CHT was very similar to the one from AliExpress. It actually even dropped off a little earlier and was able to melt 27 cubic millimeters a second. Before we investigate if this also translates into real printing performance, let's take a closer look at the AliExpress CHT and how its design differs from Bontex high flow nozzle. From my previous investigation, I know that Bontex design is made from one piece of metal, into which they drill at an angle to form the three channels and create the sharp blade that slices through the filament. The nozzle from AliExpress uses a way simpler approach, because they use a regular nozzle with an increased internal diameter and simply add a small piece of copper that has three off-center bores, which are chamfered on one side. If my AliExpress CHT wasn't assembled in my bag to circumvent a patent or simply because it fell apart during shipping is something that I don't know. But what we have clearly seen from the test is that this loose fit works even though there is not a tight connection between the brass nozzle and the copper insert. When we take a closer look at the two designs, we can also see that the AliExpress CHT has way more material to transfer the heat into the inside of the filament compared to Bontex CHT, which might be the reason it works so well. Interestingly enough, Bontec uses a very similar insert approach for their new Volcano high flow nozzle and the abrasion resistant CHT that will be available in January. If you, by the way, don't want to miss the review of them, make sure to be subscribed. I suspect Bontec's reason for using an insert is not to increase the size of the inner part, but in the case of the Volcano CHT, it's a way to even manufacture it in the first place. And on the abrasion resistant CHT, they do this to have a hardened steel core and a very heat conductive sleeve for maximum performance. Before we talk about the downside of this insert design, let's see how the extrusion performance translates to real printing, where the internal stresses in the molten material will be more important and also the cooling fan will be turned on. I did three tests. First, a simple meandering part that I print in vase mode and increase the print speed every two millimeters. If you, by the way, want to try this out yourself, I uploaded it together with a small manual on printables. In my test, I started at six cubic millimeters a second and increased the extrusion speed every step by two cubic millimeters a second. 
The part printed with the standard V6 nozzle failed quite early due to skipping off the filament and didn't get over 14 cubic millimeters a second. The Bontex CHT print was significantly better and finished the whole part up to 30 cubic millimeters a second, yet I was able to spot very strange blob artifacts starting at 22 cubic millimeters a second. The print with the AliExpress nozzle was quite similar and showed some minor layer inconsistencies from 24 cubic millimeters upwards. The interesting test though will be the print of a regular part with a ton of retractions where I wasn't sure how the very uneven internal shape of the AliExpress nozzle would perform. I started with retraction towers. I had basically no more stringing at all after only setting the retraction to 0.4 mm. The AliExpress high flow nozzle behaved differently from everything that I've seen in the past. It also didn't show any stringing at 0.4 mm, but when the value increased, the hairs came back again. This also was very clearly visible in my first test print, where I had a ton of stringing at 1 mm retraction, but only very little when I decreased it to 0.4 mm. In terms of printing quality, I could hardly see any difference between the contestants and all were able to produce nice surfaces and overhangs. I had similar results on the 3D Banshees, which looked very nice if we disregard the ringing from the printer itself. The first set was printed at medium speeds with maximum flow rates close to 10 cubic millimeters a second, whereas on the second batch, I increased the speed to 200%. Both of the Banshees printed with a high flow nozzle looked fine, yet the one printed with Bontex CHT had a significantly more matte surface compared to the AliExpress CHT, which is also a sign that the knockoff melts the material more efficiently. So all in all, I'm very positively surprised about the cheap knockoff CHT. At least on my unit, the performance was on par with Bontex nozzle, maybe even a little better, and even regular prints didn't look worse. The copper insert seems to do quite a good job splitting up the filament and heating and melting it efficiently. Yet it also comes with some downsides. At least mine wasn't super nicely machined and I'm not sure if this small leftover chip would have blocked the orifice if it at some point broke off. I am a huge fan of cold pulling my nozzles to remove residues and with standard nozzles and even the CHT this isn't a problem, but the big slug and the step in the knockoff make this basically impossible. I had to assemble mine myself and if you don't have good eyes there's a 50% chance that the copper insert is installed the wrong way with the chamfers pointing to the wrong side which then blocks more of the filament path than it helps. And this is something I also heard from other sites during my research. For some, the nozzle seems to work well, others had big problems using it, and this might be just due to inconsistent machining quality, which isn't something I can say about the original Bontag nozzle. And then there's also the problem with a patent. I'm not a lawyer and I don't even want to get involved in these discussions, but there is a significant chance that the AliExpress CHT infringes the 3D Solex patent. The main patent claim is that a heat conductive material, here our copper insert, is attached to the inside of the nozzle. Is a loosely inserted copper slug really attached to the wall because there is heat transfer? Would this also mean that my but is attached to my radiator simply because I sit on it and it warms me? I think you understand what I mean. Patent language is part and how you interpret these claims is something that lawyers need to do. But there are currently a lot of things happening because E3D opposes the patent in the EU and the US Patent Office rejected the patent in its current form. This doesn't mean that 3D Solex won't get the patent in the US, but they have to pour more money into it. We'll see what the future holds. 3D Solex definitely deserves a ton of credit for coming up with the core heating technology for 3D printers and Bontex deserves credit for its genius implementation and making it mainstream. Yet we can also see that patents inspire others and motivate them to design around these innovations, potentially coming up with even better solutions where we can all benefit from. If the AliExpress CHT looks as it does because it's easier to manufacture or because they wanted to avoid patent infringement is something that I don't know, but the solution seems to work better than I expected. And just looking at the current design, there's still a ton of potential to improve it even more. 
And maybe in the end, calling it a knockoff wasn't the right word, because the design even improves some things. But what are your thoughts on the cheap AliExpress CHT nozzle? Are they any good, or would you rather stick to Bontex CHT because it works and it supports their innovation? Thanks for watching everyone! I hope you found this video interesting. If you want to support my work, head over to Patreon or become a YouTube member. Also, check out the other videos in my library. I hope to see you in the next one. Auf Wiedersehen and goodbye! <clears throat>